Hi, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to catch up with a serious news story that flew largely under the radar at the end of last week as we were embroiled yet again in the inability of too many MPs to behave in anything like a professional manner, let alone as leaders of our nation. But in amongst the sexist attacks, lies about Partygate and porn in the Commons, the National Crime Agency was raiding the home of a Conservative politician potentially as part of a serious investigation into COVID PPE fraud. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, Michelle Malone, who sits in the House of Lords as a Conservative peer, has been accused of links with a company called PPE MedPro. Now, that sounds like a medical company that sells PPE, doesn't it? just the sort of place you'd go to for PPE in a medical emergency like, I don't know, a coronavirus pandemic. But here's the thing. The company didn't even exist at the start of the pandemic. As James O'Brien might say, oh, yeah, you see, this is one of those dodgy COVID contract jobs. The government finding itself with too few stocks of medical equipment which it was warned about before the pandemic, by the way, so don't excuse them on the basis of, oh, unexpected pandemic, instead of going to establish PPE companies, they decided, here's an opportunity to raid the nation's coffers, lads. If they gave a crap load of money to their lovely friends and donors to buy PPE themselves on the open market and then give it to the NHS, keeping a massive chunk of the profit for themselves, that would be a nice way of paying them back for their kind, if a little self-interested support, wouldn't it? But they won't know how to get PPE. They don't know about these things, some of them may have said. Not to worry, said the government. We'll pay them way over the odds and claim that we have to spend above the market price to get the goods quickly. It was a spectacular wheeze. Tory donors and supporters got buckets of cash for basically carrying out a few online orders for kit without any specialist knowledge, without any contacts or anything like that. The sort of thing you or I could have done if we were given masses of money, more, enough, more than enough to compensate for the fact we wouldn't know where to go or how to get discounts. This encouraged them to keep donating to the Tory party, of course. The Tories were using our money to do it. So it wasn't costing them a thing. So the donations were really kickbacks of our tax money. If the kit wasn't all that great, the government would cover for them. If it didn't arrive at all, they'd still cover for them. They'd get to keep the money no matter what turned up. PPE MedPro, which was reportedly only set up in May 2020. It's a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? Isn't that round about the time that the Conservatives were starting this scheme and chucking out buckets of money for PPE to to companies that didn't even exist. Yeah. They were given £122 million for medical gowns that were never used. They weren't fit for purpose. They weren't suitable. They, they failed the, the, the um, safety tests. It wasn't what was ordered. But they didn't have to pay the money back. Now, it has to be said that with PPE MedPro, the government are putting up a pretense, at least, of trying to get the money back, but it doesn't seem to be progressing very rapidly. In addition... Just to highlight the scale of the abuse here. So when I say they just gave these people money and it's like, okay, well, they haven't got the right contacts. They don't know what they're doing. They won't be able to get the stuff at a good price. They Just to highlight how much extra money they gave them to cover all that. PPE MedPro, given a contract, £122 million for those gowns, only spent £46 million of it acquiring them. So even if the gowns had been fit for purpose, usable, we would still have paid an extra £76 million for them. As compared to getting the Department for Health and Social Care to purchase them directly. That's a 165% profit of public money. Like, how dare anyone, absolutely anyone, say that privatisation is a more efficient use of public money? Like, at the moment, they're saying, oh, if this passport office doesn't sort itself out, we'll have to privatise it to make it more efficient. How bloody dare they? So we gave them £122 million for nothing at all. It's not that we got, gave them that for £46 million worth of gowns. That would be bad enough. Because the, the Department for Health and Social Care could have got on the, the internet and done that themselves. Costing us just the 46 million. No, 
We got nothing at all. And that was just one contract, though it was the largest one. You know, this particular company received over 200 million pounds of our money in PPE contracts. No public tender process. You know, the government justified this by saying, look, we have to give them directly because we need to act quickly. I mean, fair enough, act quickly, fine, allocate them. But, but they didn't do that, did they? Because they weren't giving the contracts to establish PPE suppliers. And it took months for the equipment to arrive, so it wasn't even quick. And when it did arrive, a lot of it was unusable. The High Court has labelled various schemes like this as unlawfully pursued. But this isn't really good enough. The bottom line is, these people took our money, didn't provide the goods in return, even given the exorbitant cost of the ones that were usable. And it's not even about a consumer issue. You remember, because we didn't have this PPE, people died. People have long COVID as a direct result of them not having access to that PPE that took months to arrive and when it arrived wasn't fit for purpose. That the government allowed them to do this doesn't lessen the guilt, the guilt of the, the, the companies that did it. If the, if the government had given me £100 million and said, buy me some gowns, I wouldn't have gone, oh, well, I'll do it. That is the government that's given to me. I would be just as guilty if I did that and didn't come up with the goods. Like, under any other government, if a public contract is awarded for goods and services and we do not get what we paid for, we claw the money back. That is what should happen here. Yes, the government are fraudsters, but so too are their accomplices. The Tory ministers are the safe crackers, but these donors and supporters are driving the getaway car. They're all in it together. So last week, and you would assume this is connected, the National Crime Agency raided properties in the Isle of Man and London, and this included the mansion home of Michelle Moan. They've taken computers, phones, documents, all sorts of the works from the report I read, now, Moan had denied any involvement in the contracts being awarded to PPE MedPro. She says she's got nothing to do with it, but there seems to be a lot of reports that say otherwise. And there is currently an investigation by the House of Lords Standards Commission into this as well. And let's be honest, the National Crime Agency has just raided a property where PPE MedPro is registered at the same time as they raided her home and a couple of other places as well. I'm getting the strong impression that the NCA think there's very good evidence to suppose she is involved and it's quite likely that they've now see, seized the evidence. I guess it will now be some time before we get much of an update. Could take months obviously to go through all these files depending on exactly what they're looking for. But it shows that investigations may finally be started into the rampant corruption that took place during the earlier stages of the pandemic. When we were at our most vulnerable, instead of a government working to protect us, they just released the vultures to pick at our bones. And although I don't know exactly what the focus of this NCA investigation is, at some point we will find out. And when that happens, there will inevitably be more questions asked about the way the government managed our initial pandemic response. And that time might not come until later this year, maybe even next year. By then, the Tories may have shit the bed with even more scandals, and the public may be much more interested in what exactly they were doing as our bodies were piling high. Because the problem with Johnson's strategy of putting things off, the, the aim is, so people sort of forget, and passage of time softens it for them. The problem is, though, you end up ramming so many skeletons in the closet that the whole thing just bursts open at once. But there we are. Interesting that things may be moving. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. Maybe even click on the join button now that memberships are open. And until next time, I'll see you later.